Hi, my name is John Condon, and I'd like to talk about my paper, Asymptotic Expansion of the Difference of Two Mahler Measures, that is to appear in Journal of Number Theory. Let's start with some definitions. For a non-zero polynomial p in n variables with complex coefficients, the logarithmic Mahler measure of p is defined by the integral you see in front of you. This can be thought of as the log of the geometric mean of the absolute value of p, taken over the product of n copies of the complex unit circle. This integral is always finite, and it's a real number. Mahler measure, if you're not already familiar with it, pops up in number theory in a variety of places. My starting point is a result of David Boyd's from the early 80s. Suppose you have a polynomial in two variables, p of x comma y. If we were to replace y with x to the n for some whole number n, then of course you now have a polynomial in just one variable, x. But if you take the Mahler measure of that and let n go to infinity, Boyd showed that it approaches the Mahler measure of the original two-variable polynomial. Let's define mu sub n of p to be the difference of these two Mahler measures. So, for a given polynomial p of x comma y, mu sub n of p approaches zero as n goes to infinity. But how does it approach zero? Can we get more fine-grained information about its behavior? Boyd himself provided a first-order asymptotic for mu sub n of p for the particular polynomial 1 plus x plus y. In that case, Boyd showed that mu sub n could be expressed as some coefficient over n squared plus big O of 1 over n cubed. The coefficient of 1 over n squared here depends on n, but only mod 3. It's periodic. Motivated by this example, and guided by some of the ideas in its proof, I was able to extend this result, providing an asymptotic series expansion for mu sub n of p, not just for this polynomial, but for all two-variable polynomials that satisfy a certain, not very restrictive hypothesis. This expansion looks sort of like a power series, except that it uses powers of 1 over n, not n, and that the coefficients are not constants. They're a special type of bounded function of n. Now, just to remind you of what I mean by an asymptotic series, I mean that mu sub n of p is equal to each partial sum of this series plus big O of the next term. The whole infinite series does not appear to converge in general. In the paper, I give explicit formulas for these coefficient functions that here are denoted c sub k of n. The details of the formula are involved, but in brief, each coefficient turns out to be a linear combination of polylogarithms of points that are moving cyclically around the complex unit circle. In particular, each coefficient function can be expressed as the restriction to the whole numbers of the sum of finitely many continuous periodic functions. In fact, the set of periods of the underlying sumands is the same for each coefficient function. I was also able to prove a kind of uniqueness result that implies that, in general, mu sub n of p cannot be expressed asymptotically by a true power series in 1 over n, that is, one in which the coefficients do not depend on n. Let's go back for a second to that result of Boyd that I mentioned earlier, where he gives an asymptotic for mu sub n of 1 plus x plus y. If you apply my theorem to this polynomial, the coefficient of 1 over n squared in my series exactly matches the coefficient of 1 over n squared in Boyd's result, as you would hope. So this result of Boyd follows as a special case of our theorem. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll take a look at the paper.